What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. Man, show a friend of the show. You see the WKU behind him is Coach Steve Lutz now, Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Coach, how's it going to be in BG, man? Oh, it's great, man. Wonderful day, bright, sunny. Only thing is, it might be a little warm this afternoon, but uh, we just got done with workouts, um, which was was pretty good for a Monday morning, and uh, now just got a couple meetings in the afternoon, so no complaints. I hear that, Coach. Well, let me ask you this, man. Uh, you know, has sense of Corpus, Corpus, Corpus Christi, you know, and uh, this opportunity came open for you. Tell me about the opportunity of Western Kentucky to come up here to uh, coach in the Conference USA. Really stood it out, so you want to come up there and take, take this gig after Coach Stansberry been there, been there for for a while there. Yeah, I mean, Western Kentucky's a, a basketball place, right? I mean, they've been to Sweet Sixteens, they've been to a Final Four. Um, the standard, obviously, is to uh, to get to the NCAA tournament and win games. And uh, that's very or, or is and was very, very appealing to me. Plus, I mean, the fan base here is fantastic. I mean, they come support you every single night. Um, Diddle Arena is is one of the better places in, in all of college basketball to play, um, especially when it's at capacity. I mean, these these people really, really support it. So um, it's a special place. And, uh, you know. It's uh, it was left in good shape. Co- Coach Stansbury, you know, he left a few good players. I was able to retain a few of those guys and, and they worked really hard. So, um, you know, I think it'll be a, a good situation for everybody. And coach, you know, you know how important it is to have a high quality staff, man. Talk about your staff. You hired up there to help you as you build this thing out and see what's been its foundation that's already been set for you at Western by Coach Stansbury when he, when he left. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always been a big believer in trying to uh, hire people that you know uh, well and that you trust and uh, have similar views and, and philosophies and, and backgrounds. And, uh, you know, everyone on our staff, for the most part, has has been at, you know, um, especially in the full time slots, they've been in junior college or they've coached at a level where maybe you don't have everything that you need. You don't have private planes. You don't have tons and tons of uh, money in your budget. And you have to learn to work really hard and really smart um, so that you can get where you want to go. And uh, so that was one of the big things for me is to hire guys that were loyal guys, guys that were trustworthy, but also knew how to make, you know, get things done uh, maybe without everything that you need. And, and at every, you know, position or school or however you want to say it that you go to, you know, there's always going to be a little something that you might need more of. Well, that can't ever be an excuse. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that my staff, 
is never going to use that as an, as an excuse. And therefore, you know, we're going to just figure out a way to get it done. No doubt. You're so right about that. I know plenty of the OVC. I know very well what you mean. <laughs> Having to make stuff work, man, for sure. And, you know, Coach, like in college, you would say it's changed over the years. And now you all are on solid foundation. You have Kennesaw coming in 24. Talk about the landscape of Conference USA and how excited you are to, of the new Conference USA with all the quality schools that you all have to play now. The travel going to be crazy with it really being Conference USA, but the quality of schools is very cool what you got right now. Yeah, there's no questions. Um, but I like we lost some really good teams. Obviously, North Texas, Florida Atlantic, UAB, you know, those guys were good. And and you know, you had Charlotte played in the in the championship of the CBI last year. Then what was it? Uh FAU makes Final Four and and uh UAB and North Texas are playing in the NIT ch- championship. So you lost good teams, but you replaced them with good teams too. You know, Liberty is is obviously. Richie McKay's done a fantastic job there. Um, you know, New Mexico State's a, a storied and, and a very proud program, and Jason Hooten will do a great job there. So you've you've added good pieces to it. But with that being said, I mean, whether those teams had stayed or the new teams came in, our, our job is still the same. The, you know, the Western Kentucky fans deserve and they want to win the league and they want to win the tournament and then go to the NCAA tournament. And, and that's our goal every single year. And, uh, you know, obviously that's our focus every day. No doubt. And Coach Mesh, this man, with how has scheduling changed for you being at Western versus being at Cor- 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 Corpus Christi? I know now you can probably buy people if you want to. You might you still get balls. How has scheduling been different here in Western Kentucky? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at Corpus Christi, I obviously was getting bought several times a year, and there was a, a financial number um, that my program needed to raise um, in order to help offset, you know, budget issues at, at Corpus Christi. And it's the opposite here. Obviously, I have the the wherewithal and the means to, to buy teams and bring them in. Um, but with that being said, man, I hadn't had a whole lot of opportunity to schedule in my first season because um, I walked into a schedule that was darn near set um, prior to my arrival. There was a lot of home and home series um, that were finishing up, and then they had started a couple uh, with Murray State and with Wichita State prior to my arrival. Those contracts were already signed. So I think in year two and and beyond, I'll have a little more uh, imprint imprint on our on our scheduling. Uh, but this first year, you know, you're just trying to balance it as best you can we've we've got way too many road games for this first year uh we've got to get some more home games no doubt and that's the whole thing at the show level man trying to get games at home and i feel like bg is very accessible you get on flight to nashville drive up there on a the bus you're good so and the environment is great up there so i feel like teams that should want to come play you dill arena and come to nashville for a night or two and come up there and play <laughs> you see what happens <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I mean, there's obviously a lot of great programs in and around us, right? I mean, you come play over at UK and then play us or play Vanderbilt and play us. I mean, there, there's a lot of opportunity for, for teams to come in and, and uh, you know, get to play two quality teams and, in, in, you know, in great venues. And I'm probably assuming that maybe I'm wrong. I'm assuming probably you and MTSU are uh, travel partners probably. They probably do that too. They want to do that as well. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Although it it doesn't look to me um, like they've have they, we have traditional travel partners thus gotcha. far, but, and and I think absolutely once we get Kennesaw in, that will be more of the case. But this first year we don't. But yeah, I mean, you know, Middle Tennessee is what 100 miles down the road, and they call it 100 miles of hate. So uh, you know, it would make sense for us to to probably travel with it, with one another on the road. Well, at Tennessee State, we, we, we hate them too, Coach. Look, Tennessee State, we hate them too. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We're the real That's TSU, funny. Tennessee, not you. <laughs> gotcha. We hate them too, man. Yes, we hate, we call that the, the, the 30 miles of hate. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, you walk into a new job, you don't understand everything. And, and we're at the Conference USA meetings and and Nick McDevitt, he's, he's telling me all this. I'm looking at him like, Really? Like we got to wear a certain uniform and y'all wear a certain uniform and this and that. And he's like, Oh yeah, coach. Oh yeah. I go, well, if that's what we do, then that's what we do. Let's get it on. <laughs> 100% man. And 100%. Let me ask you this coach Lutz, man. Uh, how's it been to be, be, meet these young men, man? I know you're being on relationships, man. And building that bond with young men. How cool has it been to 
beat these young men, be, become their coach, bring guys in, get them working out up there, man, and get them getting the feel for who these young men are as people, actually in person. Yeah, no, that that's what you do it for, right? I mean, ultimately, we all are going to bring in um, probably a new roster almost every year, just because of the transfer portal and guys leaving and and coming and going and all that kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> to me, that's what's fun is you get a group or a collection of of young men, right? And those guys uh, each have different personalities, they have different skill sets, they have different um, agendas, and so you've got to um, build trust with them and then kind of, I don't want to say break down the walls, but you absolutely have to figure out a way to motivate them to do what's best for the team versus what's best for them. And uh, that's a lot easier, or a lot harder said uh, than done, right? I mean, a lot easier said than done. Um, so to me, that's the the fun part and the hard part all in the same time. But we've recruited good kids, um, you know, guys that I, I, I truly believe deep down inside, they want to do what's best for Western Kentucky. They want to get to the NCAA tournament and uh, and show the world how good they are. Um, but that doesn't mean that every single day we have that we have that mindset. So, you know, we, we have to fix that uh, each and every day or recalibrate that a little bit every other day. How fun is seeing you know, all these guys think they they, they, they they can play, right? They want to play. How's it been seeing them compete against each other in workouts and compete to get better, be in the gym to try to get ready to compete for minutes come August here when school starts? Yeah, no, it's it, it's fun to watch. I mean, obviously it's crazy because we recruit all of them. And uh, when you recruit them, you're telling them the truth, but you're, you know, you're recruiting them. So part of recruiting them is accentuating what they're really good at. Well, you still got to find your way once you get to that university, right. And on that practice floor. So um, through the recruiting process, you may say, Hey, well, we've got two guards or three guards. Um, and you know, one of you is going to start, one of you is going to back up and the other man, you're going to have to figure it out. Um, but then they get out on that floor and, you know, just as males, you're trying to size up your competition and you're trying to go at them and, and establish a little bit of a uh, hierarchy, if you will. And uh, so that's fun. It's fun because you get to see who's competitive, who's not. And then ultimately <clears throat> you've got to figure out, okay, uh, I have, you know, maybe somebody that's a little more talented than the other guy, but the other guy, he's more about winning or vice versa. And then you've got to figure out what's what's best for your team and which combination works best together as well. So it's it's like building a, a you know, it's like putting puzzles together. You know, building teams is kind of the same thing. And, uh, you know, that's always something that has intrigued me and has been fun to me. So so I really enjoy that part of it. I think my prime coach sometimes I was over compared to. I, I went too hard sometimes. So that's what somebody's telling me. You went too hard. You used to be too competitive. Because I'm trying to beat you to go get to the get to the door. So I beat you to get to the car. You know, that's just how I work. Because my dad's a coach. And so my dad from day one, like from peak a peak a beat. That's all I know. <laughs> so I, I had a hard time turning off sometimes. That was my issue sometimes, coach. Hey, man, I like those guys. I like those guys a lot. I'd rather have to have you turn it off than me trying to help you turn it on, if that makes sense. It you know, does. it's tough. It's tough when you got to motivate people to compete and work hard. Um, you know, I, I, that's not the way I was raised. That's not the way I'm wired. So I expect everybody to walk on the floor and be like, hey, we're going to get it today. You know, I'm going to outcompete you. And uh, if I outcompete you, then, <clears throat> man, good things are going to happen for me. Good things are going to happen for the team. But once you get guys to be able to to think that way, um, you're going to have a really good team most of the time. No doubt, Coach. And, Coach, for your guys, as you break after these workouts, go home for two weeks, how do you get, tell them to kind of keep working on their games when, they, when they're at home? Because, you know, some guys can get away from their structure. They get off of, of the plan for us. How do you? get them a play development plan when they go home for a couple of weeks and credit come back. So you can jump right into it and start from scratch again. Once you get back when classes start. Yeah, for sure. Like I, uh, I don't know that I have the answer for that one. Um, you know, you try to recruit good players and good people that are self-motivated. Right. And so if you do that, most of the time, uh, you know, those guys are going to be intrinsically motivated to continue to get better. And uh, the really good ones, like the guys wired like you that are ultra competitive, 
man, they're going to work even harder during that time so that when they come back, you know, that guy that maybe took off a few days, man, I'm going to kick his tail and I'm going to, I'm going to separate from him so that I, I get to play more. But with all that being said, I also want them to get away and go enjoy their families because basketball, um, especially division one college basketball, man, it's a long season. Like we had them here for four weeks and then I gave them a week off basically around the 4th of July. And then we've been here for four more weeks and they're going to get two to three weeks off. Um, and then, you know, we'll be back on the 21st of August. We'll start school and they won't get another break till October. I'll give them a couple days off for fall break. But then once fall break hits or finishes, I should say, there ain't no more time off. Like we should still be playing in March and April, right? That's what you want to do. And so, you know, you're going to get a few days off for, uh, for Christmas, but that's it. So it, it's a grind and, uh, you've got to manage that, um, in August as well. You keep, you've got to be able to look all the way through to March and April versus killing them in August. And coach, I'm going to tell you the grind of what I'm on right there, coach. You're my eighth interview today on, on a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's only, it's only what, 1245 your time. So you're, yes. you're, you're, you're doing it today now. <laughs> and I have four more after you. Wow! Wow! About, see, that's the kind of that's how I wired, coach. I just I don't care if it's a Monday. Let's get it. Let's interview, <laughs> interview people. You know what I'm saying? That's how I I can't even in this role, almost 40 years old, I'm still competing every day. <laughs> yeah, and you got to have energy, man. Right? You you got to you got to have energy because if you go into that, well, you're on eight. So if you go into number ten and you're low energy, it's going to be a bad interview, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to bring it. Much is never going to be that way. I, I love talking to you guys all day. Yeah, I love yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and you know what, though? It's just like players. Like, I feed off your energy, you feed off my energy. And it's the same in practice. When guys go hard and compete, man, you feed off that energy and then you compete harder. And now we just keep raising the level each and every day. And, and that's how you get to where you need to get. And that's what I try to teach my, my, my kids. Like for my, my two boys, it's like I should have more energy than you two have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to, they want to go, they want to do this all day. I yeah, no, to, I understand. I've got a ten year old son, so I get it. I get it. Like we gotta we gotta do we, we gotta get get going. So we gotta get going. So yeah, man. And last one for you, Coach Man. Uh, tell me some good spots in BG, man, for to eat, man. How's how, how's the food been to you since you've been up there, man? I know some good barbecue, some some good food. Tell me, tell me, tell me about it so far. So you're you're gonna think this is crazy, and and people, they when I tell them this, they think I'm crazy. Um, Bowling Green might have the largest number of restaurants per capita in the United States. Like the the county around here is you know 140 50 thousand people, but there's over 300 restaurants here. I mean, it, the like I've gained 10 pounds, and I'm like, golly, I gotta quit. Um, when I get off with you, I'm gonna go eat lunch with the with uh, our volleyball coach who. Man, if you haven't uh, if you haven't uh, watched women's volleyball and watched Western Kentucky, you're missing out because he's one of the best. And I've been around, um, you know, Kirsten at Creighton, and I've been around Coach Shondell at Purdue, and and those obviously are fantastic coaches. But Travis Hudson's big time. But anyways, back to your question. Because I like to eat, I've got plenty of places for you. I mean, uh, you know, if if you're asking about uh, a steak. Last night I ate at Tony's Steakhouse. I mean, it's it, it, it's a it's a version of Jeff Ruby's. I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, Montana Grill is really good. Rafferty's is good. There's a little deli spot called Griff's. Um, you know, there, there there's Mexican food. There's barbecue. Shogun for uh, hibachi. I mean, I, I and that doesn't even you know that not even talking about. Cracker Barrel or uh, Cheddars or Outback. So, man, we got plenty to eat for you. Got plenty. Man, I'm going to come see you on Thursday, man, and see what we got to do when I come up there, man, because like I said, you know, you're nothing but an hour from my house in Nashville. They're nothing but an hour away. So I'm going to definitely go up there and check out what you got up there, Coach, man. I said, I'm glad you're here. Now, now I know we're – now, don't do what I do, because I'm, I'm going to the casino on – on, on Wednesday night, the Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky Downs. I'll be over there doing some slot machines on Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, just make sure you don't hit the mint on your way over to uh, to campus. You know, the mint's kind of halfway between Nashville and and Kentucky, right there on the on the right, coming up. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, yeah, I'm going to do that a little bit on Wednesday night, but I'm going to come see you on Thursday, man, for sure, when I when I get through with my, 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 my plumber here. So, I'm going to see you Thursday, Coach. Come up there and see what you guys are doing up there, man. Okay, sounds good. We'd love to see you, Bobby. All right, Coach. I'll see you, buddy. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right, man. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.